Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Perfect RIA Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Jarvis, and with me, another Matthew, Matthew Holleran from Proudmouth. Matthew, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm good, man. It's always nice to hang out with another Matt. <laughs> it is. I, uh, I always tell this joke that every third guy born in the 80s was named Matthew, and that's why everybody calls me Jarvis. And I don't want to say what decade you were born in, but I made that joke one time, and the kid that I was talking to was born in like 2001. He's like, what is the 80s? Like, oh, oh, that's brutal. And I don't want to tell you which end of the 80s I was born on either. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, but Matt, tell us, tell us what you've been up to. Um, tell us what's going on with Proudmouth. You just came back from the Jolt Conference as we're recording this, like, and talk to us about influence, talk to us about everything, man. Let's, let's launch into this. Well, so here's the, the, the crazy thing that happened at Jolt was, and by the way, it's the best marketing conference out there right now for financial services. And, and it's sold out again. So you really do have to get your tickets. In fact, they're already pre-selling them for 24. Um, and this is not a, you know, an ad for Jolt. But, but there was a serious philosophical underpinning of what every single solitary marketer was saying. And it was very, very simple. You have to unapologetically be yourself in your content because that's what will help accelerate your influence. And influence is the only marketing that's left that works. Yeah. You can't sell people anymore. People want to buy from you, Matthew. That's what's important. And if you set up your system so that it's real, true pull marketing, everything changes. Well, I love this uh, being your authentic self because uh, for, for better or worse, that's going to come out, right? If, you, if you're being your inauthentic self, one, everybody noticed that, right? We all know when somebody's not being themselves, you're going to burn out. And then even if those two things don't happen and a client comes in, they're going to realize that, that the you that was on TV is not the you in, in real life. And so they're, they're just, it's a dead end the other way. It is a dead end. And in fact, I'm living proof of the burnout, right? So when I was a coach and a consultant, I was trying to be this person that I'm not, right? And, you know, and, and a lot of it was uh, appearance-based things uh, and even how I would present myself. Here's the deal, dude. I am an absolute Muppet. I always have been. I <laughs> flail my arms like Kermit. You know, I'm – anyway – when I embraced my Muppetness, uh, actually our business from a uh, marketing and branding perspective really exploded. When my partner really embraced, you know, who he is as a person, you know, we both really solidified ourselves within financial services. And, and what advisors hang their hat on, and this is what drives me crazy, is everything they can't control. Sure. Stock Everything market, bond control, yeah. prices, interest rates. I mean, all of those things. Because, you you know, advisors are sending out like market commentaries. And then Oof. when their clients come in and they're so pissed because all their clients want to talk about is the, you know, alpha, beta, data, gamma, whatever between their portfolio and what's happening on in the, the market. And that's not what you, because you guys are planners, right? That's a huge difference. Yeah, it, it really is, right? I always talk to advisors about this, right? If if you're just repeating the things that they can hear on CNN or every other email subscription, you're you're just noise. And there's maybe we can talk about this too. There's also a point where the volume gets to be too much. I, I met an advisor the other day and they were sending out weekly market updates. Why? Why? Now the clients have to, every time they get a correspondence from you, they have to decide, is this something worth looking at or not? Like you've taken away your role as trusted advisor. You're now just another source of noise. Well, yeah, and we talk about rising above the noise. That's a core principle of us, our, you know, our actual brand messaging here at Proudmouth. One of the great things is you have to, you are always going to contribute to the noise if you're saying everything, everything else is. And in fact, the opening of the Jolt conference was absolutely hysterical. And in fact, the video exists uh, on Twitter. Uh, and yeah. basically, it's an advisor who has this book that says uh, financial advisor talking points or playbook or something like that. And he's just walking up to people and saying, I'm a fiduciary. <laughs> and they're like, what the heck does that mean? I don't even know what, what that means. That mean? um, I can, you can trust me. That's sort of, anyway, it was really, really funny, but that's what happens a lot. So in our system, this whole idea of Excel accelerating your influence, we know that step number one is one, knowing exactly who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. And that's another way that you really contribute to the noise, Matthew. And it's very, very frustrating because if I'm talking to everybody, so I ask this question all the time, what is your niche? So I'm on stage and I'm interacting with the audience. What's your niche? Well, I work with, you know, people over the age of 65. Oh my God. How many people is that? Wow. Yeah. What, 30 million people 30 in the US million? alone. Yeah, I yeah. knew you know the number. Right. Yes. Or my other favorite one is, well, I work with women. Really, that's 51% of the population, right? And so, so we want them to, to narrow down. 
But if you know who you're talking to and you know what their real problems are and you have things in common, I mean, come on, Matthew, you're up on stage at the conference. We were just hanging out. You're seeing the same stuff. And, you know, the funny thing was, is there were still people who were having epiphanies in the audience. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, boy, I'm just trying to think. I've only once in my entire life seen someone who niche too small. And it was just because there was like only 50 people in that niche. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they, they like literally was. And I'm like, dude, this is not, this is like, you know, it was like directors of nonprofits in this certain space. Like there's only 50 of them. Ooh. Even if you get a 10% market share, that's not enough. That's the only one. Ooh. Another was, I don't know what it is. There's like this, this like not visceral is not the right word, but we all have like this insane reaction to narrowing our niche. Like, like I'm going to exclude too many people, but, but that's never the case, right? It's never the case. Well, do, do the math, right? You guys are freaking financial advisors. Let's do the math. Yeah, it's easy right? math here. Easy, yeah. <laughs> and that's what was so. So uh, I, I did a panel at Jolt, and there's a lady named Misty Lynch who's an advisor in Boston, and she focuses on female-owned businesses in the greater Boston area. Perfect. If she got one percent of that, she's got a full book of business, yeah. right? And so that's the sort of thing. It, the other thing that I hear, Matthew, all the time is, well, if I start focusing on a niche, my clients will feel excluded. How do you answer that question? I, I'm, I'm all about what works. Just show me somewhere that's happened. Show me somewhere. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Like, I'm not trying to throw you this. Like, show yeah. me for those listening. Like, hey, I can't create a niche in female business owners in the Boston area because my men business owners in Nantucket will be. I've never seen that happen. And by the way, if, as a listener, if you've seen that happen, like, please call me. Like, you pursued a niche and your existing <laughs> clients abandoned you because, like, yeah. Matt and I will get on with you. Like, we need to dissect that thing. Yeah, absolutely. I, I volunteer any amount of that's time right. to have that real that's conversation. Right. So, yeah. Huh. Well, so let's let's talk about this authenticity thing. So yeah. Micah and I kicked off our podcast, right? We were, we were just sitting in a bar in Colorado. We thought everyone has a podcast. We should have a podcast. Mm -hmm. And we just blocked out time. Every Monday morning, we get together, we record the podcast. And for a long time, I assumed no one was listening to it because I didn't know what happened to it after we recorded. We just got together and we jammed about our business. We talked about what we were important about or concerned about. And then we turn around and suddenly we're getting like all these downloads. Like I think we're at 1.4 million downloads now or something crazy. Mm -hmm. But I think to your point, we talked about what we were really passionate about, what we were excited about, and we spoke to some group of the audience of the world, and we pissed off some group, and that's just yeah. kind of how we roll. Well, the interesting thing is only 12% of advisors are podcasting. Really? That's it. Only 12%. So it's interesting that we hear that all the time. Oh, there's yeah, just yeah. too many people who are podcasting. No, we, we're not even – you don't say – how many advisors have a website? 98% of advisors have websites. Um, but uh, you know, <laughs> It's saturated. It's oversaturated. I shouldn't have a website. I'm going to go take mine down. Yeah, I know. So I love the fact that you guys just jammed and riffed and didn't pay attention to the numbers because here's the deal. A lot of those, especially for advisors, they're vanity metrics, right? You're never going to be getting the no. numbers that you need. One, to get a sponsorship, and two, you're mm -hmm. never going to be Joe Rogan. So just cut it out. You know, if you if you really are focusing on that narrow niche and you get 250, 300, 500 downloads, listen, that is that is great engagement and we want that engagement. But the other thing that's important is that fact that you got you were in a bar and you guys were just riffing, right? Or that you do that on Monday mornings, you riff. The Dr. Sue says, you know, there is nobody more you were than you, right? Or Oscar Wilde with, you know, you might as well be yourself because everyone else is taken. That's what people are buying. So stop hiding it. Let that out. Talk about the things that you love to do when you're not working. Find those real connections. When you find those real connections, everything changes. Yeah, it really does. And, and if nothing else, so again, I, I agree with you, ignore the vanity metrics. If nothing else, it's going to make you a better advisor because you're going to practice those things in a way that you can't hide from yourself, right? When I go back and listen to that recording, I realize, Wow, I, I said the uh were a, um a lot of times. I got to cut that out or I wasn't very succinct about this. We, we For whatever reason, we hate practicing. We hate rehearsing. This is a good way to force yourself. So even, Matt, your point, if no one ever listens, you're still going to be a better advisor just because you've taken the effort of thinking through what it is you're saying. Well, we, we actually grade our podcasting clients, just so you know. So we run them through some metrics. And one of them is, you know, frequency of go, what we produce go-to words. I'm so so she knows. Sure. And um, it's fascinating because people will say, but I don't feel like I'm getting any better behind the microphone. Well, when you first started podcasting, you said, um, 78 times. You said it four in the last, is that progress? Okay. The other thing too, that a lot of people don't know about podcasting is you have to know how to breathe because, and I just, this just happened to me yesterday. I was interviewing this lady, very, very famous lady. She doesn't know how to breathe. So what happens is she gets really quiet at the end of her sentences, which oh, makes it sound sure. like she's not as confident about what she's saying because she didn't realize that she really needed to breathe. But these are some of the finer points. What we ended up doing 
much like you, because you've scaled what you do, you know, with your book and all of your speeches and all of those things, we realize that we can't directly help every single solitary person who needs a podcast. We can't. So we actually built an entire academy. It's called the Pod Rocket Academy, where I teach stuff like this at scale. In fact, what I just talked to you about is free. It's 100% oh, free. Awesome. We have a podcasting 101 course that's 100% free. It's absolutely freaking amazing. And I know that more advisors need a podcast, but they're not going to pay our premiums because advisors are cheap, which I don't really get. Uh, they still use their businesses as their piggy bank, um, and they don't realize that they need to spend 10% of gross not net on marketing. Okay, so you've killed it, right, for years, right? When you look at how much money, what percentage did you spend on marketing it, when you started seeing the exponential growth that, that you've had? It was, it, well, it was more than, it was like 110% because it was more money than I had. <laughs> like, it like literally was like, you know, yeah. we're doing, this was before podcast days, right? We're doing seminars and when I'm talking to centers of influence, I'm taking people out to lunch and yeah, yeah it's got, it's got to be all of it. In fact, I, I recently did the math on what I spent last year on personal development. I'm a big advocate of that, sure. right? So if you're looking at hiring you, right? Say what percentage, you know, I, I spent more on personal development last year than I earned in the first five years of my career combined. Yeah. And, and I felt like that was still a drop in the bucket. So yes, you've, you've got to invest. You can't, it, it, that hedonistic adaptation comes in, right? Like, oh, I got another thousand dollars revenue and I just spent another 1200, not in a good spot. Right. Yeah. I, I, when you look at the firms that have grown at the exponential rate that advisors want their firms to grow, that's what they're spending. So let's just do the math very quickly. So you're a million dollar producer. That means you're supposed to be spending $100,000 on marketing. And when I say that to people, Matt, I would never do that. Okay, well, then you're never going to get to where you really think that you want to go. Something that I that just occurred to me, one, one of the hacks I use to this day is I, I want to do marketing that I always win at. Right. So that's why I started doing client events versus prospect events. I thought, sure. well, worst case scenario, if my clients show up and I buy them dinner, oh, that's okay. That's like a worst case. So if no prospects show up, I still win. Hiring you and doing a podcast, worst case scenario, as we talked about a minute ago, you're going to get better at your craft. That's the, sure. you, you cannot lose at this proposition. Now, if you define loss by a vanity metric, right, I'm going to beat Joe Rogan. You're going to lose at that. Like, I can't help you. You're going to lose that one. But if you're saying, hey, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it every week. I'm going to have a coach. I'm going to have someone like Matt come in and help me get better. You cannot lose at that game. Well, you can. And there's actually five aspects of return on what we refer to as influence, not an investment when it sure. comes to podcasting. Number one, it's the best client communication tool you're ever going to have. Yeah, That's it. Down. Because it's portable and it's convenient. People listen to podcasts in their quiet time. When is the last time you got invited into your ideal client prospects or COIs into their quiet time without being creepy? Probably never, right? Never. Uh, number two, uh, it actually gives you greater share of wallet, hands down. Here's the deal. You bring in an estate planning attorney, the estate planning attorney starts talking about trusts. And all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, the, the client who's listening said, oh my God, I have a trust. I never funded that trust because it's still sitting in a bank CD that I never told my advisor about, which by the way, happens all the, all the time. time. Constantly. Right? And so, you know, that's, we, that's actually a great story from one of our clients. The podcast drop. That day, a client called up, I have $250,000 sitting in bank CD right now that I need to use to fund a trust. Can you help me? I heard on your podcast, you can help me, right? So a greater share of wallet. Centers of influence, dude, holy crap. Yep. Part of our model is bringing on centers of influence and talking to them, estate planning attorneys, divorce attorneys, CPAs, all of those local business owners. You gain access to their whole audience and the unintended consequences is basically an endorsement. So here's the deal. Why am I on your show? right? It's not just because we met and I thought you were freaking cool. Uh, it's because one, um, I have an enormous amount of respect for you. Uh, number two, okay. I know you run a great show. And number three, I get to get to meet your audience. That's a five-star tip, by the way. This is like a, a win-win because people, people never abandon shows, by the way. You know this, right? Like there's this threat, like oh, if I have Matt on my show, he's going to talk about his show. Everyone's going to leave my show and go to his. That's not how it works. <laughs> it's just, it's just works. never, by the way, if you've yeah. run into that, like again, call us yeah. and we'll yeah. dissect that it's one. never happened in the history <laughs> of podcasts. All right. Uh, the next one is easier referability, right? It's yes. easier to refer somebody to a podcast than call my guy because that's very, very uncomfortable. And the last one is net new assets. We have brought in millions of dollars in new assets for our clients because if they follow those other four things, new business just happens. And so that's the quantification. My favorite thing about podcasting is, is something that happened to me a little while ago. It'll tell a very, very quick story. So I was at FPA National. I had just, my brand new salesman was there with me. He'd been with us for about two months. And so we're in um, Seattle, Washington. 
which was not the greatest place for the conference. But whatever. In December. Uh, in, yeah, December in December, yeah. December, corner dude, of the, kind of the worst time. Yeah, yeah. Rainy and nasty. Anyway, I was – anyway. And so we had just set our booth up and it was – we have this ridiculous booth because my business partner is a branding and marketing specialist and he goes 100 million percent over everything. So anyway – I'm sitting, I'm sitting, we're standing at the booth and this guy goes, Matt, and he like beelines right towards us, gives me this big hug. We're t- he, he's talking to me. I wasn't really saying very much. I'm just nodding and, you know, ex- you know, listening to what he's, cause that's what I do. I listen. And then he get and he gets done and he says, you know, it's, it's so great to finally meet you in person and walks away. And I turned to Mark, who's my salesperson. His mouth is wide open. He's like, I thought that guy was your best friend. I was like, I've never met him before in my life. He's like, well, what just happened? I said, that's the power of podcasting. He has listened, he, by his own admission, had listened to 400 episodes of our show. Wow. Not only our show, but the shows that I've been on because he's a fan, right? And I'm not saying that to be arrogant or hedonistic or anything like that. It's because that's part of what I've been trying to build with Proudmouth is that people are attracted to our message. Interesting. The, the point you mentioned about centers of influence is one of those, those five points. That's, that's, I talk about this in my book, roughly one third of my clients come from the centers of influence way before I had a podcast, but I just, this last weekend for my personal mastermind, we had on, um, Evan Carmichael is a YouTube guy, not in financial services, 3.6 million subscribers. He's, he's talking to us and he says this exact same thing you said, Matt. He says, Hey, you should go to all of your centers of influence, CPAs, attorneys. And he says, when was the last time somebody invited your local CPA to be on a podcast? I'll stand by the number zero. It's never happened, yeah, right? Yeah. You're like the first person ever that's invited this person to be on the podcast. And he says, even if not a soul listens to it, even if it's the worst episode you've ever done, this person is now your best friend for life, just right. like the conference example you gave. Right. And, and I, my whole business model has been bringing on people who I know within the industry or people who I want to know, because here's the greatest part about being an interviewer. You don't have to say much. In fact, this is weird for me, Matthew, just so you know, because I'm always on the other side of the mic. I'm the one asking the questions. Um, but when when you show somebody that you care and that you're listening, everything changes. Every and Where else can you do that? It's kind of creepy to do that at lunch. Let me ask you this question, right? It's just not the right format. But it's also so intimate and so personal. And if you show that you're listening, no matter who refers mm-hmm. or they refer to, you are going to be top of mind with them on a regular basis. Well, this is another place where it will make you a better financial planner having guests on your show. Most of us are terrible listeners, right? And, and the more empathetically and the more sincerely, like I'm I'm just like super fascinated, right? You took the time to be in my show and, and, and whatever, but I'm like, man, I'm super fascinated by what you have to say, right? And that comes across in this interview. Like this isn't like fake interest. I come to these, I know you do the same thing. Yeah. That's why we're talking. It's like, yeah. I love this. Like at minimum, you and I are gonna benefit from the discussion. And what will be a bonus on top is that all of the thousands of people who listen will also benefit from this. Like, how, how can we lose? Well, we can't lose. And one of the we greatest can't. gifts that happen, uh, my grandmother said to me, Matt, you need to have two, you have two ears and one mouth, so you <laughs> listen twice as much as you talk. But the other thing that's really vitally important is the fact that, you know, people should listen to listen. They shouldn't listen to talk. In fact, I'm writing my third book right now, uh, and it's called Shut the Hell Up, the Greatest Communication Tool Ever. And it's really to teach people not just how to listen, uh, but also how to um, actively participate in conversation with actually out, without saying anything. And I'm really, really excited about it coming out. I don't really have a date on that yet. I'm about 17 to 20,000 words into it right now, and I'm still working on it. But um, I think that advisors are terrible communicators. Uh, So at the beginning of the Orion conference, uh, Eric Clark was up on stage. Aaron Clark or Eric Clark? Eric, 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 thank you very much. CEO of Orion. Yeah. yeah. So so he was up on stage, and he he pointed to a statistic. It said 80% of client meetings are spent with the advisor talking. Oof. 80%, dude. Barf. That's probably worse than that. It probably is, but this is probably a self-reporting thing, right? <laughs> and I'm just thinking to myself, oh my God, isn't your job to just shut up and find out what your clients need? Well, no, I need to talk about market trends and all that. No, you don't, man. Stop it. Just cut it out. Do you have a fiduciary responsibility to provide great advice? You do. So I support that a million percent. Yep. But 80% should be flipped. You should be 20% of the time. They should be speaking 80% of the time. Oh, geez. Matt, I feel like we could go for oh, yeah. hours on this, man. Like we could, we could, yeah. I can't even believe the time goes by. We've done, we both done episodes, right? Where you're like, is this going to ever end? Oh, and this one, God. it's like, oh man, our, our time is up. But this, 
this podcast, like, like yours, is about taking action, right? So for our listeners for the TPR Nation, what action could you give them? Like, hey, go do this thing. Well, there's two. Number one uh, is, is you need to start learning how to communicate at scale, whether mm -hmm. that's video, that's podcast, blogging, social media, that's number one. Do it once and chop it up into a million different, different pieces. That's Gary Vaynerchuk's model, which is why he's one of the most successful marketers in the world. And number two, listen, join the Pod Rocket Academy for free. It's free. It's free right? There's like 15 courses in our free version. We have a paid version where you get office hours, uh, eight hours of office hours a month wow. uh, for $99, but whatever, I don't need to go there. But listen, if you want to learn how to really brand yourself well, if you want to learn how to set up a good marketing plan, you want to learn how to podcast, podrocketacademy.com for free. The other action item I would give to all of our listeners is whatever platform, right? Matt, you mentioned there's all these different platforms, whatever it is, start today, like yeah. literally start today and do an episode a week. Even if that, and our, and our friend Ben Brandt, who has a very successful podcast, grab your iPhone and record it on the selfie mode. Just that's all you need. We can get so hung up on the technology and which thing. And you and I were joking before the show about which microphone do you have? None of that matters start recording and just commit every week. For me, it's every Monday morning at 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. I record an episode with Micah every single week, no matter what, we never miss it. Uh, and that's what gets us really good at this. Well, Matt, so much appreciate you having been on the show uh, and our matching haircuts. I love that. Uh, for all of our listeners, right? It's the things that you do. And please, for the love of everything, stop talking so much in your meetings. 80%. That's terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> awesome. Well, until next time, happy planning.